until now most of the world has rejected the Lord. Therefore, everyone who will acknowledge me before men, I will also acknowledge him before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny him before my Father in heaven. It is no longer a mystery that the appearing of the Lord is in his corporate body of the first fruits, the express manifestation of his person. These are the ones who can abide in his devouring fire and everlasting burnings. Since they are one with him, as flames of fire, they are delighted to be in the midst of his glorious God fire. Until now, most of the world has rejected the Lord. They not only have not wanted to hear about God, but much less, hear him. Not only the world, but some Christians have rejected him. Many are like Israel at the base of Mount Sinai. All the people witnessed the thunder and lightning, the sound of the trumpet, and the mountain surrounded by smoke. When the people saw it they trembled and stood at a distance. They said to Moses, You speak to us, and we will listen. But don't let God speak to us, or we will die. As time marched on, not only do they not want to hear God for themselves, their fear of Him has been given over to indifference as traditional idolatry is grounded in their lives. And when the fiery judgments come upon His people, they will go out from one fire, but another fire shall devour them. This verse shows how those who refuse the dealings of the fires now in their life will face it later, and they will know that he is the Lord as he sets his face against them. Truly, man is not the captain of his own destiny when God has deemed it otherwise. Having been falsely taught has caused most saints to refuse the fire of affliction, even calling it the work the devil. But the godly fires they reject will come to them later, but not only to them, it will eventually come to the world as well. With God's punitive and yet merciful judgment, consider 1 Corinthians 5, 1 through 5 where, one man was turned over to Satan for the destruction of his flesh that his spirit might be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. That man could not escape the fires of the Lord, and in this case, it was Satan, the man's great adversary of affliction that served God's directive. You see, Satan is subject to God in every facet of his being. There is no such thing as an omnipotent God wringing his hands and trying to figure out a way to defeat this terrible foe. This liar and murderer from his beginning is as much a tool in God's hand as any other of his created beings, whether flesh or spirit. The manifestation of the sons of God will cause the whole world to come forward to be judged. Those having been born of a spirit will take off their shoes, as Moses did after he turned aside, and their lives will be changed forever. You see, to turn aside in the Hebrew means to repent, turn around, reverse direction. And we can count on it to be so with the first fruits, those at his coming, and the end rank of all creation. This will come to be even if it takes fire to make it so. We rejoice that it is the Lord who does all the cleaning, refining and purifying, and we receive it with joyfulness. He has chosen many people in times past, as well as today, to be refined and overcome all things. It is he in them that touches the core of their being. If they did it on their own, apart from him, they would be their own saviors. They wouldn't need him. 
Surely, this buffeting plays a major part of bringing us to the transfiguration of the sons of God. In Hebrews 5, 8 we read that, Though he was God's son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And in Matthew 17, 2, he, Jesus Christ, was transformed in front of them, and his face shone like the sun. Even his clothes became as white as the light. Shining as the sun, he manifested the fire of God, his clothes in the light of full glory. And do you think it will be any less after our suffering finished and our time comes like his upon the mountain? No difference at all. Like big brother, like little brothers. We find fire in the form of lightning. For as the lightning comes from the east and flashes as far as the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. In this case, however, the coming was in judgment upon Jerusalem in A.D. 70, by the Roman army. We are aware that there are cherubim of the Lord with flaming swords that keep the way to the tree of life in paradise as noted in Genesis 3.24. Of course, these cherubim are not to ultimately keep people out of the garden of God, but only to let those in who have no flesh or carnal nature left in them. No corruption shall enter the paradise of God. At the end of the age, the sons will be the very fire of God, that is the express image of his person. As lightning goes from the east unto the west, so the sons shall cover all the earth. Standing as angels of the Lord, and similar to Exodus 3 in the burning bush, they shall be instrumental in releasing creation from the bondage of corruption and setting them in the heavenlies. The sinners in Zion are afraid. Trembling seizes the ungodly, who among us can dwell with a consuming fire? Who among us can dwell with ever-burning flames? We see that the question suggests that there is a people who can live in the fires of God, and verse 15 verifies it. The one who lives righteously and speaks rightly, who refuses gain from extortion, whose hand never takes a bribe, who stops his ears from listening to murderous plots and shuts his eyes to avoid endorsing evil. We should not fear the holy flames of God, for this is one of the things with which he makes his overcomers. In one place John the Baptist said that Jesus will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire, indicating that his Holy Spirit is the same as fire. See Matthew 3.11 Shine out from the fiery trials, for truly, it is by fire he purifies his people. Frankly, the fire of God is a great place to be, for it is therein where we dwell with him. Malachi poses a similar question as that of Isaiah. He asked, But who can endure the day of his coming? And who will be able to stand when he appears? For he will be like a refiner's fire and like cleansing lye. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, the one who is, who was, and who is coming, the Almighty. So come, Lord Jesus. Amen.